Hello everyone, today we have video support officially being added within the core update for RetroArch and this is going to be within the FFMPEG variant of RetroArch as you will see. And I'm going to help you get prepped for, retro, uh, for running videos through this. Uh, I would recommend having a RetroArch icon on your desktop and I will show you how to add this within a couple minutes once I switch over to the computer. But right now I'm going to open up my RetroArch icon. I'm going to go into my settings video you're going to want to have bilinear filtering on then I'm going to go back load content settings and you're going to want to have use built-in media player enabled and right now I have it uh low content start directory and uh, I'm doing my dummy forward for videos here but I'm going to show you how to add it as a game as well we'll run a random one like I did the other day commercial one here And we're good to go on uh, commercials here. I'm going to include a few of these commercial videos for you, the guys and gals, to enjoy. Look how far video games have come in the last 30 plus years here. This is the Odyssey from the 1970s here. Look at this. I'm going to save core override and generally the settings will stick but just remember these two settings that you need to re-enable in case you have an issue. I'm saving core override and I'm going to quit at RetroArch. Then I'm going to switch over to the computer and add a commercial as a game. I'm going to file add. I'm going to my USB host drive where I have some of the commercials already preset. I'm going to click all so I can see the list here. Let's add just this commercial here. And I'll just randomly search Google for some artwork here. Doesn't matter what I have. Some interesting choices there. I would have said this nifty little artwork here. And I would recommend closing Hashi after you're done doing the command line to ensure everything properly saves. But you're going to need the change for this ability to run videos as games. Ben forward slash needs to be Ben forward slash RetroArch hyphen FFMPEG. And then you're going to want to close RetroArch. Then I'm going to go to my games folder. And I right click and put by date modified so I can see the most recent thing on top. Note that the commercial is 7 zipped. You're going to want to truly pay attention to what you do within Hashi because if you 7 zip a PlayStation 1 game, it will not function. You need to really know what could acceptably be compressed. So I'm going to have to reopen Hashi here. And we're going to fix this. So let's reopen Hashi. And I did this on purpose just to show you since many people have been telling me they've been having issues like this. But I would recommend having the option to compress games disabled completely unless you know you're running something like SNES TurboGrafx-16, Sega Genesis, and so on. Generally, cartridge games can run in 7-zip format. Arcade games can run in 7-zip you know, zip or 7-zip format. But you're going to want to run CD-based games within non-compressed format other than the ones that work with them, like eBoot, CHD, etc. But we're going to go to that commercial I added here. Go to this massive list here. And I'm simply going to right click on it and decompress to select the game. Then I'm going to close Hashi to make sure this saves completely. Let's go back to that game folder. Notice that it is now the proper format. I'm going to copy that over to the USB host games folder. And 
Now let it overwrite the one I have there. Now I'm going to switch over back to, uh, well, first I have to show you how to add RetroArc as an icon too. Let's make sure we do that real quick. I'm going to file, add as a game, going into my core set. We'll go to the one fourteen, eighteen release. In my extra folder, all you have to do is simply add this Clover app for SNES as a game. Then uh, just copy it right over to the flash drive and you can open it as an icon on your user interface. So I'm exiting RetroArch now. I have everything copied over and we're going to switch back to USB host. And there were two updates today. One was uh, the ability to have more optimal use of the NES Classic for USB host. And uh, I'm showing you the video support now. There's going to be an upcoming video because this new Hashi revision has released also supports NTFS now. So I'll do a video tutorial on that as well. But I'm going back in my, into my RetroArch options. I'm going to make sure them two options are enabled. I have bilinear filter on. I'm going to low content, settings, and this got disabled, so I'm going to make sure it's enabled again. Then I'm going to exit RetroArch. Then I'm going to go to the commercial on the list here. Again, that was bin forward slash. Sorry, I said bin forward slash. It'd be. Uh, RetroArch hyphen FFMPEG. I'll show you in the description for the video, of course. But we're going to load the commercial here, and it should open with FFMPEG if I did everything correctly. And it opened up with FFMPEG. We're all good to go.